watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from CU Stadium, Maryland 38 to Villanova Wildcats 20. Villanova beats the spread. Maryland plays some pretty decent football, except for that third quarter. Fairly easy win, Mason. What did you see? Yeah, I think um, the Terps got a lot of guys in today. A really solid performance. Came out of the gate strong and fast like Lox likes to. And then the third quarter just you know, dropped ball by Octavian Smith, turned into an interception. Villanova had the ball for about the first 10 minutes. And then it's just about getting guys in, getting good reps, basically using this almost like a half bye week. Uh, and you walk away with a fairly easy win. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Bruce will join us from the studio in a moment. Uh, we're going to talk about Billy Edwards. We're going to talk about number 10, Ty Felton, is uh, having a historic days, start to this year. Back. Yeah, now the first Terp to have four straight 100 yard games since Jermaine Lewis. Ty Felton puts up another 150 yard plus game this week and just spectacular plays all around. I mean, he's having a season to the likes of a Stephon Gates or DJ Moore right now for uh, Maryland and really. I'm excited to see what he can do for that Big Ten play. Big Ten plays coming up. Billy Edwards, really good performance. 28 for 32. The Marlins unfortunate reception, as you mentioned. MJ Morris got it a little bit. Cam Edge had a handful of plays. So overall, not a whole lot to take from a game like today. But you made some interesting points. We talked about what James Madison is doing right now in North Carolina. And just the size difference between Villanova and Maryland, Maryland really looks Big Ten size. Yeah, I mean, it's just flat out guy for guy. Maryland is so much bigger than uh, the competition both last week and this week. And as you go into the Indiana game next week, you start to really match up against teams that are more uh, equal size and equal talent across the board. The Terps definitely have more talent than the Indiana team they're going to play next week. But a lot, of, a lot of high hopes right now in Bloomington, uh, Indiana. Some trouble with Charlotte in the first half, but they're rolling now with less than a minute left, 52 to 14. That James Madison score is still surprising to me. Roman Henby did a good job of being the number one back. See a couple pictures of him here breaking through tackles. One of the things about Ty Felton is Maryland's made a, a lot of plays by getting him the ball in space one on one, and he breaks tackles just like he's doing in these photos. Uh, that adds something to his game that it just seems well. That's different. what's that's what's always been there in his game. What's not is his ability to track the ball and his route running at the level that it is right now. I mean that play down the sideline, down the right sideline, um, uh, when the penalty, the offside yeah, penalty, I mean, Billy just throws it, and look and, what happens. Yeah, I mean he tracks the ball down. The other one in this left hand corner, this is uh, the football team outside the end zone, where he's just tracking the ball at, at a level that. Now you have two guys that can do that. Because Caden Prather has been able to do that for you. Now Ty Felton can do it. it. Makes a really, really effective offense from like that 25 yard to 17 yard line. Unfortunately, as you saw in our highlight, he caught the ball right on the edge and went out of frame. But this week, it's a touchdown. Last week, same play, right side, they didn't give him the catch. So I like the fact they come back to that. Speaking of things they came back to, last week they used Dylan Wade on two wheel routes. He caught the second one. When Maryland needed to change that momentum back in the third quarter, they hit Dylan Wade, and, and he makes that catch. Why did you? wonder if they should have gone that way. Well, I mean, Caden Prather was streaking wide open coming to the near side of where we were on that play. I think Preston Howard and Dylan Wade's now finally starting to ease into his role a little bit and, and really look like a starting tight end at this level. It was good to see Preston Howard back out here. He's been battling injury throughout the year. Both of those guys, really, really strong performances. They finding that middle of the field, which has not been open at all for this offense and probably won't be 
going forward. That seems to what teams want to take away. Villanova just was not able to do that uh, in the first half of this game. But as you move into next week and you move into the more challenging games, Preston Howard and Dylan Wade are definitely weapons you're going to want to utilize more and, and really mix into this offense. Still the concern is the ability to gain yardage consistently running it up the middle. All right, we've got Bruce in studio. Bruce, what do you think of what Ty Felton's doing? Thanks, Wayne. We've got to take a quick look at Ty Felt now because you hit it on the nose. In four games, he has caught 37 passes for 604 yards. That's over a, that's 151 yards per game on the average. That is spectacular. The only way to put it. Today, he had 14 for 157 against Villanova. And Billy Edwards is throwing Ty Felton into the pros with these numbers, because these numbers speak volumes. He catches the ball over the middle, on the sidelines, everywhere. Ty Felton has been fantastic. Back to you, Wayne and Mason. Excellent points. I think we all agree on that. I'm happy to see you so excited about Maryland football. The development of Billy Edwards, something, of course, we've been rooting for. What's your take, a little more neutral observer to this? You know, Wayne and Mason, I did think there'd be a drop off with Billy May with Billy Edwards Jr., but listen to me, no drop off whatsoever from Talia. The same kind of accuracy, the same kind of leadership. He's been spectacular in the first four games, of which Maryland's won three out of four. 102 for 132, 1155 yards, eight TDs, and two interceptions. Today, 28 for 32. Can you imagine that? And, you know, I know he's throwing a lot to Felton, but he's throwing to Prater. He's throwing to Dylan Wayne. And today he was hitting Preston Howard. He hit one over the middle to Preston Howard. That was spectacular. Billy Edwards is a leader. He's a quarterback. And he stepped right into Talia Tangabaloa's shoes. And uh, at this point in time, there's been no drop off. And that's not how he threw the ball in the past. I think he worked on his game, got the opportunity, and with each game, he's getting better and better. Wayne and Mason, good win today, 3-1, and one. on to the Hoosiers. Hi, I'm Rick Jacklich, and I'm here with another big dog, Coach Kevin Willard, coach of our Maryland Terrapins. Coach, we're looking for a giant year from our turf. We're looking forward to a great year here in Maryland. But I hear you're coming off an all-time great year at your law firm with some amazing awards. We've been very blessed, Coach, without a doubt. The awards this year include Best Civil Litigation Firm in the entire state of Maryland, Best Malpractice Law Firm in the entire state. That goes along with our other awards we've won over the years, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm in the entire country. But it's not just me, Coach. It's every one of the lawyers in the law firm. That's why we love you, Rick. So, Terp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jack Litch Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1 and just tell them Coach sent you. Thanks, Coach. And Terp fans, show your support for our coach and our basketball team and all the athletes in Maryland. Buy season tickets to come watch the Terps. And most of all, go, go Terps! Terps. Yeah, I mean, a lot of lateral speed, just that attacking mentality that this defense can really take with that Wingate and Harris combo uh, getting downhill for them. I mean, really, really solid play from Donnell Brown, Trey Reddick, Mike Harris, and Daniel Wingate. It's just a lot of speed on the field for them in that look, and you, you want to see them in an opportunity where a team really is trying to get the ball down the field against you. Villanova's adjustments were really, really good in this game to change it to almost like a sliding run offense. I don't even know what you want to call it. It was basically picking the, the left end guy off, roll out plays nonstop, and they were able to get some yardage, both in the running and passing game that way. And that works well in the middle 
30 to 30. That's hard to score with against this defense. But yeah, Watkins really adapted his game to be fun and effective to play small ball against the Maryland defense. And look, I think they kept the ball going over for 10 and 11 minutes in the third quarter doing that, but just wasn't enough. Different level of football. They played well. They didn't make a whole lot of mistakes, although they were consistently called for linemen downfield. Yeah, I think that's just something that's being watched across the board at this point in college football. Um, the review of it, I thought, was really just strange play in the game. I did not really know they were doing that. I think we could have used that here a couple of years ago. Um, but overall, it comes with that RPO nonsense. Um, you just are going to have the guys start sliding on field if you decide to throw it too late. That's really the negative against that style of offense. And then the penalty of the game that just shows the aggressiveness, sometimes over so, of the Maryland defense. My defensive MVP, the MVP so far is Glenn Miller. He loses his helmet, got a foot in the face mask, ripped his helmet off, and he turns around and tries to make the tackle anyhow. And of course that costs him 15, but I love that aggressiveness. Yeah, he's an aggressive football player. There's no doubt about that. Probably does not need to get back involved in that play. I mean, right. in the midst of tackling a guy, the rest of your team is coming. You just don't need to put yourself in that. In uh, harm's way, we need him playing corner and safety. And uh, Trader, another solid game. Yes, he was the defensive, the league's defensive player of the week. Uh, what a great thing to have safeties like that. And then you had the speed of these linebackers, and this defense still has a chance to get its goals. Maryland gives up 51 yards in the first half, and then they played, as I was telling Bruce uh, off camera, it seemed like Maryland plays 100 guys. Fox likes to do that, and that'll wrap us up here on the field. We're going to go to the press conference. And we'll talk a lot about undefeated Indiana next week. Yeah, we will on the podcast, on our Football Friday podcast. And then uh, we're thinking about making the trip there. If everything goes well, we'll see you from Bloomington. Otherwise, we'll see you from the Turp Talk Studios in Rockville. I'm Wayne. That's Mason. Bruce back in the studio. Thanks for watching the Big Dog Post Game Show. And go Terps.